Have you ever wanted to do this? Or this. Or this. <laughs> oh, I got it. Let me show you. So the key and the only game mode we're gonna be talking about here is momentum control, mostly because of spawns and spawn manipulation. Momentum control has really quick spawns and really fast ability regen compared to other game modes. It's basically mayhem, except nobody else really is casting their super if you're playing correctly. I do like to play Hunter specifically for momentum control. I'm not a big Hunter PvP player. I actually mainly play Warlock. Hunter just brings something to this game mode that nobody else can, and that's six shooter golden gun. As you saw at the beginning, Getting six shooter and golden gun is essentially unstoppable when you pop it and so is other supers but nothing allows you to kill as quickly and on any part of the map that six shooter does and if you combo that with combustion getting a shot back on kill you'll essentially never run out of shots if you don't miss and you take your time and so anytime you pop golden gun you'll get five kills six maybe seven depends on how well you manipulate spawns now if you don't believe me take a look at this clip Now, if you do plan on running something like Warlock, you can either do Dawnblade or Well. I would personally recommend Dawnblade because the main power and the main kill potential is from your super. Now, you're going to get a lot of weapon kills, which allow you to get two, three supers. And while Well is technically shorter, you'll get around the same and you'll get way more kills with Dawnblade, depending on the map. Uh, well, it does have its use. If it's a map like Disjunction and you want to be a bit weird, <laughs> you can pop Well on the right side of Disjunction, depending on which side you're on. The outside, all the way on the on the right, put on the scout rifle and body shot people all across the map. Um, and that's just personally not what I feel like doing. I think running around with Downblade is way more fun. So if you're going to do that, it's again, you're going to run a Combustion and Eruption, but I think Beams is definitely needed here for the um, tracking and because what golden gun has a dumb blade doesn't is hit scan you can be completely on the other side of the map and instant kill someone versus dumb blade will not be able to do it and then again for titan i think solar subclass is just completely reign supreme uh hammer is essentially unstoppable unless you're against a shutdown super or maybe a golden gun that's away from you hammer lasts kind of longer than the other two supers simply because of Sol Invictus making it last a long time every time you kill someone you run through your sunspot and your rows cost less and it's really easy to aim them because they're really quick compared to like Dawn Blade. the blades go quick but not as fast as the hammers and the arc is quite easy now Dawn Blade does have the tracking and I'm not actually sure if beams works with hammers it might work but I don't think it would be um, strong if it does but I think at the end of the day if you're gonna run Titan it's hammer if you're gonna run warlock it's Stoneblade. if you're gonna run hunter it's golden gun all day now to even begin to get a seven column you have to understand how spawns work I'm not gonna teach you how to manipulate spawns as Kemi cakes already has a fantastic video on it which I'll link in the description you can start with counting enemy deaths it sounds like a lot of effort but it's really simple and I'll explain how so I'm gonna play this clip in full and then go back and show you the thought process you should keep in the back of your mind while playing this isn't something you need to divert a lot of brain power to but you can start by keeping track of the kill feed and how many enemies die kind of subconsciously in the back of your mind these two super Three, four, five, six, seven, got it. 
So if we go back to the clip and take a look at the kill feed, you can notice that a teammate already killed one player. And so you can start by counting one. Now, obviously I'm looking at another player, so that's two. And then there's a guy behind him, so that's three. And since I have my super, I can just cast it because I know there's gonna be three people spawning. So that's six immediately if I'm quick enough. Now I get lucky here with another guy, so we can just add four to the counter. I know their spawn is to the right, so I turn right and there's a guy immediately here, so that's five. And so we look to the left and there's three people spawning here. So that's five and then six, seven, eight. And that's your seven column. It's as simple as that. Moving on to the next clip, we can kind of apply the exact same logic as the last one. The power of magic throwing knives gets me this kill. And if you look at the kill feed, my teammate just got a kill with Dawnblade, so that's two. I turn around this corner and there's a guy in front of me, so that's three. There's a guy really far away, but I just got super, so that's four. And my teammate just got another kill with Dawnblade, so that's five. So we immediately pop our super here because we know that our teammates are holding the entire other side of the map. Where else could the enemy spawn? To our left. So we kill the guy far and that's five. But for us, it's three, which doesn't matter because the five people are going to be immediately spawning. So we immediately go to our left. At six, kill the guy jumping up. We saw that guy go inside there, so that's seven. Now I didn't see that guy on the right, but I will later. Kill this guy here. That's eight. Kill the next guy. That's nine. That's ten and eleven. So you just want to keep a running tally of how many enemies are dying. It doesn't matter if there's only six people, and you're not going to get to eleven, obviously. But it's just my way of keeping track of how many people are going to spawn. And you can just subtract the number and count yourself. So for example, if you wanted to ignore teammate kills, so you just count the two, pop the super, and that's three and then immediately keep chaining four, five, six, seven. Now there's actually a secret tech with golden gun that allows you to keep track even better of how many enemies are on your screen. So if you notice when I killed the guy that was walking out of the building, the ignition actually exploded and showed a yellow number on the wall to the right. And that yellow number lets you know that there's another enemy there because that could only be from ignition damage from your golden gun, which really allows you to keep track of how many people are there because sometimes people are behind a wall and you're only able to see them through the ignition so you know to push forward. At the end of the day, I'm probably running one of two weapons in the primary slot. It's either going to be Huckleberry, or it's going to be Jade Rabbit. Huckleberry I've used essentially 99% of the time, basically because it is the strongest primary in momentum control. Nothing quite beats this weapon, simply because of its exotic perk. Kills with this weapon reload a portion of the magazine. Now they're a bit loose with the word portion here. Essentially, you're going to get the entire mag back every kill. And since everyone dies in three hits, if you're at the right range, you'll essentially never run out of ammo. And it's the reason why I think Huckleberry is the only weapon or the only sub you should be running. Obviously, the Immortal exists. Obviously, you can run Aikilo Sub, Shaiwa's Wrath. Maybe you like Submission, but they just don't have the power that Huckleberry has only because of this part of its perk. Now, Huckleberry is the center front of any loadout I use in momentum control. I essentially keep this weapon on for every single game. The only time I ever swap up this weapon is for one reason, and it's if it's Vostok or Eternity. Those maps are extremely long range, and I really think that Jade Rabbit is the answer for those maps. Now, Jade Rabbit is strong enough to be a contender for a most used primary weapon anyway. Now, there's also a fact that Jade Rabbit has 80 stability and stability is directly aligned with aim assist. Oh brother, this guy stinks! That's why guns like Jade Rabbit and Polaris Lance are disgusting and feel like they shoot refrigerators. No Time is also just as strong, but I just personally don't really like using No Time here. Uh, I think Jade Rabbit is more fun because I like the flicky playstyle, but it's also very good. And again, you could also use a different sub here. You can use Submission or Immortal. Whatever you really want to use, you can, but Huckleberry is the gun. If you're not running it, you're missing out. It's unstoppable. Moving on to the energy slot, we're looking at only a few weapons here. Now, I mainly run Hush in my secondary slot simply because I like the range that Hush has. It has essentially infinite range because no map has long enough sight lines to not allow a bow to one shot, and it has opening shot, which makes it shoot tree trunks. It's kind of gross. <laughs> Archer's Gambit is also a really disgusting perk, and I feel like this weapon is really underutilized simply because it's Sunset, but I don't know if you've ever used Archer's Gambit. It essentially makes it so you don't lose gunfights, especially with bows. Yes. 
Another bow I see people using a lot is Lemon Narp. And there's a secret bow that I feel reluctant to tell you about, but the new seasonal bow, Stasis One, with Gut Shot Straight, allows you to one-shot body no matter what. I believe at 10 resilience it will still one-shot body, but I have not tested it. So do not use that. You're weird. You use that. I have two more subs here. I have Chariot's Wrath and Aikilos. Teraba is also good. However, it's an exotic and I don't really think you need it. The perk doesn't really give you that much because you're already killing in three shots. I only really put on Aikilos and Shiro's Wrath or if I'm using No Time or Jade Rabbit uh, because I want the close range. I have likely Suspect in here because I crafted this a long time ago and I think it's really good. I just am not a fan of rapid fires. If you're able to get your hands on a lot of special ammo, if you're able to keep the momentum, it's really good. This is really strong, especially with successful warm up. And then I threw Ariana's Vow in here because it one shots to the head. And the heavy slot, I essentially only run two things. I either run a sword um, with Eager's Edge for mobility. You grab heavy and just use it to chain your kills quicker by moving around quicker. Or you run a weapon with Killing Tally. Now specifically Killing Tally because it does not go away unless you swap your weapon or reload. Now you're essentially going to never reload and if you're using an LMG you're not going to stow the weapon because of how quick it kills. This specific archetype with Killing Tally times 3 will do 104 damage to the head which is very good on the ammo economy because you get around 28 shots for picking up heavy. I've noticed sometimes that when you pick up heavy bricks off the ground, it gives you more than 20 shots. Sometimes it gives you 30, sometimes 40. I don't know what that's about, but maybe it's because of field prep. I have not tested it. I'm not sure. But this specific roll right here is very good. You can get another weapon that's also very good, and that's commemoration with killing tally, and that's craftable. I would very much recommend that, but if you have this, up to you. I mainly run these two because they're both solar and so it allows me to benefit from mods. You can run the other one if you want. I'm moving on to armor. Um, you can run a lot of different exotics here, but I mainly run stompies simply for the movement, for the speed. It's up to you on really what you want to run, but I think the loadouts I've displayed here are best in slot. And if you really want to get on those chain killing, killing sprees, if you wanna really want to get those seven columns, Huckleberry is the way to go. Your energy doesn't really matter that much. If you're playing quick enough, you can just main hand Huckleberry and maybe main hand your machine gun most of the time and you'll be all right. Good luck.